Today we're learning that the Secret Service did not sweep the building where the gunman was perched. And joining me now to talk more is Jillian Snyder. She's an adjunct lecturer at John Jay College of Criminal Justice in New York City. She was an NYPD officer for 15 years and was detailed to the United Nations General Assembly. Thanks so much for being here at this moment. We are asking a lot of questions about how this happened, and it is under review or will be under review at multiple levels, it will, it appears. What specific questions would you want answered at this moment? Thank you for having me. So my first question would be, why was that building not swept properly? Um, most law enforcement agencies, when we set up a perimeter, we will sweep all buildings, make sure we monitor the rooftops. And if that building is clear, we would then post an officer outside any exit and entry points. So can you talk a bit about the role of local law enforcement? I mean, I've covered many conventions. I'm, I'm here now at the RNC and many rallies. Local law enforcement always is a major part, and there are reports that a local police officer was the one who encountered the gunman. What have you heard, and what role does it appear that local agencies were given at the weekend rally? I heard the same thing as you, that local law enforcement did encounter the suspect on the rooftop. Um, but in cases like this, Local law enforcement has to work in conjunction with, in this case, the Secret Service. They know the area. This is their permanent fixture. They know the neighborhood. They know the buildings that are important. They should be able to readily identify vulnerable locations as well as any threats of people within that neighborhood. So really what we need to see is where was there a breakdown in that partnership between local law enforcement and the Secret Service? These events will go on. They have to go on. I'd argue that they're, they're key to, to democracy. But do you think that this is going to have the effect of discouraging people from attending political rallies? And finally, what would you say to those people who might be concerned about attending a political rally? We haven't seen something like this in over 40 years. And it's very scary. And I'm sure the people that were at this rally in the aftermath of things, after their adrenaline went down, they were like, wow, I could have really gotten seriously injured or killed. I don't think that that should just discourage people from attending political events, um, partaking in rallying for their cause. But I do think that they should remain vigilant. As we saw in the video footage, some of the rally goers were who pointed out the suspect on the rooftop to law enforcement. They were the first ones to notice it, and they tried to get the attention of law enforcement to make sure they knew what was going on. So they actively participated in trying to keep others safe. But I don't think that this is an anomaly. We haven't seen this since 1981. And I just think it's important for the Secret Service to really evaluate where there were issues, what went wrong, were protocols fully met, and how can we learn from this? It's like that, uh, the motto in New York City, if you see something, say something. Thank you so much, Jillian Snyder, an adjunct lecturer at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Thanks so much for giving us your expertise. Thank you so much.